Right, good afternoon. Um, this morning, the Secretary General spoke at the Global Action High Level event at the COP26 ongoing in Glasgow. He said the announcements made in Scotland are encouraging, but they are far from enough. He underscored that the emissions gap remains a devastating threat to the finance, and the finance and adaptation gap represent a glaring injustice for the developing world. He called for more ambitious future, revised nationally determined contributions, and for implementation of the country's pledges. He also said he was inspired by the mobilization of civil society, the moral voice of young people, and the dynamism and example of indigenous communities. Governments need to pick up the pace and show the necessary ambition on mitigation, adaptation, and finance in a balanced way. He said that we cannot settle for the lowest common denominator. And he also met with more leaders on the sidelines of COP, including Franz Timmermans, the Vice President of the European Commission, a group of mayors and ministers from Russia and China. Um, the Secretary General is also uh, about to speak via pre-recorded video conference to the Paris Peace Forum, and he will say that at a time when fractures are greatly threatening uh, the world, he will encourage leaders to engage in dialogue, and he will call for greater solidarity as the only way to heal the great fractures of this world. Um, quick update, uh, or not so quick update, on the situation in northern Ethiopia. Our humanitarian colleagues are telling us that people in Amhara need shelter, food, and water, as well as medicines and protection, as fighting in Amhara has led to many people being newly displaced from Desi, Kambolcha, Bati, and Kamisie, and other areas in Amhara. Tens of thousands of internally displaced people have reportedly registered in the city of Debre Bernan, with many people taking shelter in two schools there. Thousands of people are reportedly being displaced from Chifra and Adhar in Afar as well. The majority of these people are women and children once again. As you know, the delivery of urgent humanitarian aid has been hampered by lack of access due to insecurity. Electricity and telecommunications have also been cut in Desi and Kombolcha in, uh, in Amhara province since October 30th. In Amhara, uh, some 915,000 people have received food assistance and nearly 160,000 people have received shelter and other items since August. No UN, no UN organized humanitarian supplies have arrived in Tigray through the Samara Abala Michele route since October 18th. In Samara, 364 trucks are on hold pending authorization from the authorities to proceed. The continuing fuel and cash shortages is significantly affecting our partners' ability to transport supplies, including food. The lack of essential medical equipment, supplies, and vaccines across the whole of Tigray is also severely impacting the availability of health care. Humanitarian partners remain in Tigray and aim to deliver assistance with available resources. Between the 28th of October and the 3rd of November, 112,000 people received food in Tigray, uh, which is well below the average of 870,000 people who should be assisted each week. Throughout the country, humanitarian operations face, face a funding gap of $1.3 billion, including $350 million for the response in Tigray alone. Uh, and turning to Yemen, Hans Grunberg, our special envoy, briefed the Security Council in closed consultations this morning on his recent work, including his travels in Yemen. He participated by video conference. Mr. Grunberg concluded yesterday a three-day visit to Thais Governorate, where he held meetings uh, in Thais City, Torba, and Mocha, where he discussed with a wide range of stakeholders the urgent necessity for an end to the conflict. Mr. Grunberg underlined that in his meetings, the need for a comprehensive solution and inclusive political dialogue, and called for all stakeholders to engage in constructive discussions on political, military, economic issues that concern everyone in Yemen. Earlier today, uh, Mr. Grunberg condemned the assassination of Rasha Abdullah, a journalist uh, who was killed in Aden, and I would add she was also pregnant. The attempted killing of her husband, Mahmoud al Atami, who is also in a journalist. Mr. Grunberg said journalists everywhere must be able to do their work without fear of retaliation. 
Also on Yemen, the Acting Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Deputy Emergency Relief Coordinator Ramesh Rajasingham, briefed the Security Council in close consultations on the humanitarian situation. Regarding that, our colleagues are telling us that fighting continuing, is continuing along nearly 50 front lines, including in Marib, where at least 35,000 people have been forced to flee since September. Humanitarian community is scaling up assistance, but is quickly getting outpaced by the, increasingly scale, by the increasing scale of humanitarian needs. We're also deeply concerned that the conditions could quickly get worse. If fighting it enters a city, agencies estimate it could displace another 450,000 people. The UN continues to call for an immediate end to the Marib Offensive and a nationwide ceasefire. Meanwhile, Yemen still needs a massive aid operation. So far, so far, aid agencies have received about 55% of funding they require this year. This has helped to keep the famine at bay and achieve other important results, but money is quickly running out. Humanitarian also uh, need, also, excuse me, humanitarians also need to be able to do their work safely and without interference. Quick note from Afghanistan, where our colleagues at the UN World Food, uh, excuse me, at the UN Food and Agriculture Organization have today alerted about us about the risk of catastrophe if agriculture collapses in the country. FAO stressed that without massive uplift in humanitarian support, many farmers and herders will be forced to abandon their livelihoods and resort to rural migration. The FAO warned that this will further aggravate the dire situation in urban areas, severely damaging Afghanistan's food production capacity and contribute to worsening the already staggering food insecurity. FAO urgently needs $90 million to deliver humanitarian assistance to farmers and herders in 2022. And I think you will recall what our colleague David Beasley has also been saying about the um, increasing risks of famine in Afghanistan. Uh, from Guinea, the Secretary General Special Representative for West Africa, Mohamed Anadif, and the Foreign Minister of Guinea, uh, Morisanda Kuyate, yesterday launched a new initiative to promote inclusiveness and social cohesion in the country. The initiative seeks to help facilitate peaceful and inclusive transition in Guinea by fostering reconciliation at the national and community level. It also aims to strengthen infrastructure for peace and the promotion of human rights, as well as to increase the participation of women and all communities in reinforcing social cohesion. Mr. Anadif called on all Guineans, especially the young and students, to work to build a culture of peace and to resolutely turn away from voices that call for violence, confrontation, discrimination, and hatred. Filippo Grande, the High Commissioner for Refugees, um, said today that in Be uh, Belarus, the UN Refugee Agency and the Organization for Migration, together with the Belarus Red Cross, delivered assistance to people stranded at the border. Grande stressed that the priorities are now to prevent the loss of life and to move people from to safer locations in Belarus. He noted that UNHCR and IOM appreciate the access and are ready to assist in finding solutions. Quick COVAX update for you from Peru and Nicaragua. Yesterday, Peru received 1.2 million, uh, million doses of COVID-19 vaccine, uh, COVID vaccines through COVAX. Since March, COVAX has delivered four million, over 4 million doses to Peru. The resident coordinator, Igor Garafulic, said that this has been crucial in supporting the nationwide vaccination plan, showing that equitable global response is possible. Uh, the Pan-American Health Organization is working with vaccine producers and donors in the Americas and beyond to accelerate vaccine development and production in the region. And this week, Nicaragua received more than 300, 320,000 doses from COVAX, which was donated by Canada. We thank Canada. This brings the total number of doses that have arrived in Nicaragua from COVAX to more than 2.8 million. Across Latin America and the Caribbean, COVAX has enabled the delivery of more than 66 million doses to 33 countries, and more doses are on their way. Um, FAO again has today released a report showing that global food trade has accelerated and is poised to hit an all-time record in both volume and value. FAO expects the global food import bill to reach an all-time high in 2021, surpassing $1.75 trillion, marking a 14% increase from previous year and a 12% higher than earlier 
forecast in June of this year. The increase is driven by higher price of level of higher price levels of internationally traded food com commodities and a threefold increase in freight costs. More information online. UNHCR today released its mid-year trends report showing that the rising trend in forced displacement continues into 2021. According to UNHCR, global numbers now exceed 84 million as more people flee violence, insecurity, and the effects of climate change. The report for January to June shows an increase of 82.4 million at the end of 2020. In, excuse me, an increase from 80 from 82.4 million at the end of last year. This resulted largely from internal displacement with far more people uh, fleeing multiple active conflicts around the world, especially in Africa. Also, the agency notes that COVID-19 border restrictions continue to limit access to asylum in many locations. Tomorrow, uh, we will be joined in this room by the police advisor and director of the UN Police Unit, our friend Luis Carrillo. He will be joined virtually by police commissioners from the UN um, peacekeeping mission in the Congo, Modi Berete, and the UN interim um, security force in Abye, known as UNISFA, Violet Lusala. They will, of course, be here to brief you on this week's uh, Police Week events. Lastly, um, we are thankful for this member state, which becomes 136 member state to pay its uh, dues. This member state has five UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Within, nope. One of, I'll give you a hint. One of these sites is known as the Land of Frankincense. Definitely, I mean, not, not definitely not, not in that, what? Fr no, frankincense. I will give you another hint. The capital city of this country has the same name as a spice that we use quite often in food. Oman. Muscat. Oh, God. All right. Thank you. See you tomorrow. No, sorry. Edie. Thanks, Steph. On Ethiopia, can you give us an update on the number of UN staff detained, the truck drivers, what conversations are being held? And there are uh, reports now out of the capital that some foreigners have been caught up in the roundup um, of non-UN people. Sure. Uh there is no change in the numbers. Uh, we remain, as far as I was told not too long ago, uh, nine, uh, at least nine UN staff members continuing to be in detention. Uh, no change in uh, the detention of the more than 70 uh, truck drivers. Uh, we continue to actively engage uh, with the government um, to try to undo this, uh, this situation. I mean, we, we want to see our colleagues uh, released as quickly as possible. Uh, we want to see those contractors who have been hired by the UN and international NGOs also freed uh, as, uh, as quickly as, as, um, as possible. Yes, sir, Ray. Thank you, Stefan. There is a new uh, ruling council in Sudan appointed this uh, morning. Any comment on that? Also, uh, a source from this uh, new council said that they wish uh, Hamdouk Abdullah was part of this change. Uh, any comment also on that? Thank you. Look, we're, we're obviously taking a look uh, at these developments. Uh, I would say they're very concerning. Uh, we want to see a return uh, to the transition as quickly as possible. Uh, we want to see the release uh, from house arrest of Prime Minister Hamdok, as well as all other uh, politicians and, and leaders that have been detained. Abdel Hamid. Thank you, Stefan. I have two questions. One on Syria. The news reports say that uh, five civilians were killed in the uh, vicinity of Idlib by Russian air raids. Three of uh, the victims were children. Do you can you confirm that? And if no, I, I I have not I have not seen that report, but I will check. Yeah. My second question: 
about the primary responsibility of those refugees on the border with Poland, who is primarily responsible, the country that manipulating the issue of refugees for political means or the country that is slamming the door before the refugees? Look, Thank you. I think we were, uh, we were very clear uh, in expressing the Secretary General's concern about the lack of respect um, for these men, women, and children. Uh, refugees and migrants should never be used as, uh, as pawns in, in any way. Um, every state has a responsibility to take care of refugees or migrants that are on their, uh, on their territory. We are thankful for uh, the access that we've been given right now to the people uh, in, in Belarus. But obviously, this is part of a, of a broader political uh, issue, which needs to be dealt with on, on the political level, um, as opposed to um, the, the, the sites that we've been seeing that are incredibly uh, moving and sad. Benno. Thank then. you. Um, I ask on a regular basis about the investigation in tech envoy Fabrizio Hochschild, and here we go again. So when are you telling us what the conclusions are? Uh, I have nothing to report to you on that. As soon as I do, I shall. But there's a process uh, that is taking uh, that is taking its uh, its course. Course. We need to respect that process. Uh, for the benefit of everyone uh, involved. If, if I may follow up about the process, OIOS completed the investigation like on 3rd of August. That's like three months ago and 100 days. Like uh, the Secretary General sat here in January and said he hopes that it goes all quickly. It doesn't seem so quick right now. Uh, listen, I, you know, or the, there, there is a, there is a process outlined in uh, various administrative guidance uh, which, in which people have rights, people who have filed complaints have rights, people who's, who have had complaints against them also have rights, and we need to let that process play out. Madame. Stefan, is it true that uh, the UN people, part of the mission in South Sudan, did not get enough dose of vaccine to get vaccinated? I'm not aware, but I will, in terms of UN staff, yes. I will check. I know we are, uh, our colleagues at the Department of Operational Support have done a great job in uh, trying to reach and send vaccines to as many people uh, as possible because our frontline workers, in a sense, those who are in peacekeeping missions and humanitarian missions need to be protected. But I, I will check on the status. Thank you. Okay, uh, Pam. <clears throat> Thank you, Steph. Three quick questions. Uh, the first is on the Secretary General's comment about life support, which was, uh, it is a nod to Edie, it was um, AP, um, that the, um, the goals are on life support. He was a little more muted in his actual address. Um, do you think that will hear if he feels like it has been, any of these goals have been met by tomorrow, will he do a wrap when COP ends? And you, you can, I think we can all expect the Secretary General to express himself clearly uh, at the end of this, uh, this COP. Okay, number two is just on the Linda Thomas Greenfield uh, trip, I'm, I'm sorry, Ambassador Thomas Greenfield, trip, uh, she will be going to Ramallah, she'll be going to Jerusalem. Do you expect her to interact with UN agencies? She's going to refugees in Amman. Do you expect her to um, interact with UN agencies? On I, 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 I assume so, but I think you need to get, I can check with our colleagues on the ground, but I would encourage you to get uh, her program from, uh, from the mission here. All right, that would be helpful. And uh, I think that was it. Thank Great. you. Uh, Evelyn, sorry, I'll come back. Yes, Steph, thank you very much. Um, on Belarus, uh, you anticipated my question on that. But anyway, um, is, is, does anyone know whether the, um, whether the, whether Belarus is continuing to push migrants over the border, 
to increase the work of UNHCR and other UN agencies? And has anyone spoken to Minsk about this? Uh, our colleagues at, uh, our colleagues at uh, the International Organization for Migration and UNHCR are in touch with the authorities, both in Minsk, Minsk and in Warsaw. And as I just flagged, they've also, they're also on the ground in Belarus uh, trying to bring support uh, to the families that are at the, at the border. Uh, Thank you. One more question. Sure, go ahead, and then we'll see. On, uh, on Ethiopia, one assumes people from Tigray are working for the United Nations also. Are they being hunted because of their ethnicity? And has this come up in conversation with Addis? The authorities in Addis Ababa, what motive they are using and criteria they are using to uh, detain people that work for the UN. Uh, from our standpoint, they are Ethiopians, they are colleagues, they are staff members. I don't, regardless of whatever ethnicity may be listed on their national identity cards, and they need to be released. Dulce, and then back to Edie. Um, oh, okay, that's interesting. You said that there actually are national identity cards that show uh, Ethiopians' ethnicity. I, that's my understanding of Ethiopian uh, identity cards, okay. not uh, ours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to your knowledge, is this the first time that UN staffers have been um, imprisoned and jailed or detained uh, in, in recent history? Thanks. In Ethiopia or anywhere? Anywhere. Well, we've seen, sadly, uh, harassment and arbitrary detention of UN staff in, in many places around the world since the founding of the organization. But on this scale? Uh, I would say, in, in my recent memory, it is unprecedented in terms of numbers that we're seeing. Okay, thanks. Edie? Uh, thank you, Steph. Does the Secretary General have any comment on the death of F.W. de Klerk, the former president of South Africa who freed Nelson Mandela, and they shared the Nobel Peace Prize? Um, Yes, of course. I mean, we first of all, I will say that we are working on a, we would have a more formal statement uh, shortly, but we're, of course, very saddened uh, to learn of the death of uh, President uh, F.W. Uh, de Klerk, uh, who will be remembered uh, for his really his key role in uh, the dismantling of the apartheid uh, regime, something that uh, the United Nations had been working for for a long, long time prior uh, to that date. But I, as I said, I expect a fuller statement very shortly. Abdel Hamid. Thank you again. Uh, Mr. Dimistura took his uh, uh, post on November 1st. Mm -hmm. Do you know where he is physically now? Is he in the region or not? Well, yet? physically, he was in my office yesterday, uh, so I had a discussion with him. Uh, he is doing his normal onboarding uh, discussions with uh, with his colleagues uh, here. Uh, as soon I, as soon as he has a travel announcements, as I've, uh, undoubtedly he will, uh, we will share them with you. Benno. Um, I'm just seeing a Bloomberg story that the U.S. is raising alarm that uh, Russia may potentially invade Ukraine. Um, I just wanted to know if you have a I, comment I, on I, that. Um, this is a asymmetric, asymmetrical warfare because I have I don't see the story. I've, so let me, I mean, your your question is I'm not talking. I'm, I'm not reacting to what you're saying. Let's just be clear. Uh, I I don't I don't know. I, I I will see when I get back to my desk. Okay. What else is on the wires, Michelle? Um, uh, President Biden and President Xi are due to meet, well, have a virtual meeting mm -hmm. on Monday. Uh, the Secretary General has spoken a lot about uh, the relationship between these two superpowers. What message might he have for them ahead of, ahead of their bilateral meeting? Well, we firmly believe that uh, constructive, open and positive cooperation between China and the United States is critical. Um, to the world on so many levels. Uh, one clear, clear one was on climate, and that's why we were so happy and we welcomed the agreement that was uh, announced yesterday between the US and, and China, but obviously on the issues of trade and technology. Um, so we are, we are 
we are very happy in that uh, they will they will be a dialogue and we hope it'll continue uh, to be a dialogue at the highest level just to follow up um is the this might sound like a strange one is the secretary general planning to go to the winter olympics in china i have no announcement on uh, on that thank you all uh, one very quick one Steph. I, it, uh, it, did the secretary general meet with other people um other world leaders at the paris peace forum like maybe you said it i'd missed it but no no um, i would no no he did not because what i said is that he was he would he did not because what I said is that he was speaking via pre-recorded video message, given that he is uh, currently in Scotland, in Glasgow, in the United Kingdom. Ah, that's right. Okay, okay. Cheers. It said Paris. Okay, yeah, thanks yeah. a lot. Bye.